Hi, boys and girls. This is Chapter 9, Lesson 4. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to talk about changes in dimension. Uh, we're also going to uh, learn a new word uh, or review a word that you might know, perimeter. We're going to look at what happens when you change the dimensions of a figure. What happens to the area uh, of that figure? What happens to the perimeter of that figure? So, Let's get started. Uh, the first w word I want you to write down is perimeter. And when you hear the word perimeter, you should think fence. It's the distance around the outside of a figure, or if you build a fence around it, that's the distance of the fence, that's perimeter. So distance around outside of a figure and I'm gonna put over here it's like a fence so here is a quick example here's a figure a simple rectangle three by two rectangle uh, the perimeter of this rectangle would be how many units of fence does it take to go around this figure? So I'm going to use a highlighter. One unit of fence, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the perimeter of a figure is all the sides added together. So the perimeter how I found the perimeter was 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3. 2 plus 3 plus 2 plus 3. And that came to 10 units of fence. Just plain units, not squares. Area is counting squares. Perimeter is straight distance or straight units. Okay, now that we know what perimeter is, now we're going to look at what happens when you change the dimensions of a figure? What happens to the what happens to the perimeter? So the first example we're going to look at is what if you have a figure and you uh, you take each side length and you double it? Okay, so I'm going to write down our example. Each side length is doubled. What is the change in perimeter? Each side length or dimension each side length is doubled. What happens to the perimeter? So when you have a question like this, the best way to uh, show your work is to actually have a figure. Your book gives you figures for most of these, but if it did not, let's say that it didn't give you a figure, but it just said each side length is doubled, what happens to the perimeter of a figure? You should make up a figure, draw a simple rectangle, and do what it says and see what happens between the original and then the change. So I am going to give you uh, a simple shape. So we're going to look at a rectangle. And I'm going to label this rectangle. This side is 3, this side is 5, and we're going to, that's our original, and we're going to double the side length. So we're going to double this and we're going to double this. And then we're going to look at what happens to the perimeter. So our dimension change the, the dimension change that we're looking at, I'm going to call that C, is times 2. So Here's my original figure. I am going to double the dimensions. I'm going to double this, and I'm going to double this. Here's our new figure. It 
And if I double the dimensions, this is now 6. The 5 gets doubled to 10. So here's our original. Here is the figure with dimensions doubled. And what happens to the perimeter? So we would just find the perimeter of both of these figures. The perimeter of this figure is 3 plus 5 plus 3 plus 5, the fence around the outside. We come up with 16 units of fence. The perimeter on the, the figure where the dimensions are doubled is 6 plus 10 plus 6 plus 10. I add up all that, I get 10 and 10 is 20, 6 and 6 is 12, I put those together, 32 units of fence. So here's our original, here is our uh, figure, the perimeter of the figure with dimensions doubled. Now what is the relationship between this perimeter and this perimeter? And if you look at it, it is also doubled. So our perimeter chain, our dimension change was times 2. Our perimeter change the change in the perimeter was also times 2. So here's our change in perimeter. It was also times 2. And I can show that right there. 16 units for our original perimeter. Our new perimeter is 32 units. The change was actually the, the, the perimeter change was the same as the dimension change. They were both times 2. So perimeter change, whatever your dimension change is times 2, it, your change in perimeter is going to be the same change. If this would have said tripled, then this would have been times 3. We would have calculated our perimeter. These would have been tripled, so this would have been 15. This side would have been 9. And if I would have looked at that perimeter to this perimeter, that would be times 3. Whatever your change in dimension is, your perimeter change is going to be the same. And this example shows it. So your work today, you should be showing this. You should be showing the original figure, whatever it's asking for, perimeter or area, and the new figure, perimeter or area, whatever it's asking for, and looking at what is the relationship there. Okay, the next example, uh, actually before I get to the next Next example, uh, the hidden treasure for this lesson is uh, the GCF. Describe, explain what the greatest common factor of two numbers is. And I'm going to give you an example. So today's hidden treasure is the greatest common factor of 12 and 18. Describe, tell what it is and describe what it means. What's the greatest common factor of two numbers? And your uh, specific example today is, what is the greatest common factor of 12 and 18? Okay, moving on. Next, we're going to look at a figure. We're going to change the dimensions, and we're going to see what, what changes in the area of that figure. So for this example, each side length this time is going to be multiplied by 4. So, new example. Each side is multiplied by 4. What is the change? Describe the change in area. Now, again, your book, when you're, you're for your practice today, it gives you a figure. 
Okay, it's going to tell you a scenario, something like this, and then it's going to give you a figure. It might be a triangle, might be a rectangle. This time, I'm going to pretend that we don't even have a figure. And this is a strategy that a lot of sixth graders struggle with. And the strategy I'm going to show is just make up an example. It says each side is multiplied by four. Describe the change in area. If it gives you a figure, great. You find the area of it, and then you'll multiply the dimensions, the, the sides by four, and find the new area. But let's pretend this was it. Each side is multiplied by four. Describe the change in area. I'm going to make up an example. And again, this is something that you should be comfortable doing. If it doesn't give you one, make it, make it up. And I'm going to start with a super simple figure. I'm actually going to make pretty much the simplest figure I could make, a one by one square. One by one. What's the area of that square? The area of a rectangle, this one happens to be a square, is base times height. And I know that this side is 1, which means that's also a 1. So my area is 1 times 1, which is 1 unit squared. Can't get any simpler than that. Now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the dimensions. Dimension change. My dimension change is times 4. That's what it's said to do. Each side is multiplied by 4. So now my new figure, this is multiplied by 4, this is multiplied by 4. So my new figure looks like this. It is now Here's my new figure. This side is 4, this side is 4. Again, I'm going to find the area of the new figure. Area formula is area equals base times height. If this side is 4, so is this. So my base is 4. 4 times 4. The area of the new figure is 16 units squared. So my original is 1 unit squared. My new figure, the area, is 16 units squared. So now I'm going to look at the area change. Well, let's examine the change from here to here. It's not times 4 like it was here. It was a match where it was times 2 times 2. The area change, if I did times 4, I would have an area of 4, and I don't. I've got 16, an area of 16. So I know that, let's see, I know that this, to get to this, from this area, our original area, to the new area is times 16. Okay, I can see that. This is times 16. Okay, to get there, that's times 16. But I, wanna, I want to talk about this area change in terms of the dimension change, which was times 4. So what did I do? How did this times 4 change to go from here to here? And it was actually this dimension change squared. It was times 4 squared, which is 16. So I'm going to write that down right here. 4 squared is another way of talking about this change. It's times 16, or 4 squared. 4 times 4 is 16. So the area change is c squared. The change in dimension squared is going to be your area change. So now let's do some highlighting. So. Change in area, whatever your dimension change is, in this example it was times 4, that means the area change is going to be, whatever your dimension change is squared. 
times 4 times 4 squared, which is 16. Let's back up a second and pretend that instead of multiplied by 4, it said multiplied by 5. Well, then this figure would be 5 by 5, and the area of that would be 25 units squared. And my area change would have been from 1 unit to 25 units squared. If it were a 5 by 5, this would be times 5, and this would be the change in area would be times 5 squared, which would be 25. So today, you're looking at changes in dimension. How does the perimeter change? And what you, again, your work should look like this. You should show your original and your new figure and then talk about the change. On this side, if, or if you're talking about an area change, again, you should have your original area. You should show that work. And then your new figure area and talk about that change. So your work today should look like an original and a new figure, original and new figure, and describe the change that happened. Okay, that wraps up lesson four. Uh, there's two more lessons to chapter six, so or I'm um, chapter six to chapter nine. There's two more lessons: lesson five, lesson six. Uh, start reviewing the early, earlier lessons, lessons one, two, and three. Uh, and I will see you soon for chapter nine, lesson five.